Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now you know I get very excited about most of the uh, resources that I choose for Resource of the Week but this one has got me particularly fired up because I've got a bit of a personal connection to it. You see, at the LaSalle Maths Conference that was held in Kettering in March 2018, I launched a new website, uh, completely free for teachers, and it consists of what I call SSDD problems. And in the following weeks and months since I launched it, I have been blown away with how it's been received by teachers, and how teachers have been creating these SSDD problems and sharing them. And I'm so, so happy that Scotty Knowles has chosen to upload his, uh, his first ever set to Tez, and they are absolutely superb. So before I show you Scotty's resources, let me sell you on the dream of SSDD problems. So the mistake I used to make in my teaching was that I used to teach a topic, say something like Pythagoras, and I would teach all the basics, and then I would do an applications lesson. And that application lesson would consist of loads of Pythagoras questions, but in different contexts. So you'd have the classic diagonal length of a football field, you'd have a ladder leaning against the wall, a boy in the distance in the ocean, and all this kind of stuff. But the problem was, all the deep structures of those problems were the same, they were all Pythagoras. So it was quite obvious for the students how to do them. But then the problem came two months later, or even two weeks later, whenever they were faced with one of those questions in isolation, they then really struggled to identify that it was in fact a Pythagoras question. So I decided what we needed was to flip this on its head. Instead of giving students batches of problems where the deep structure was the same but the surface structures were different, turn it round and give kids batches of questions where they all look similar but the deep structures are different. And that means that every time kids see a right angle triangle after they've been taught Pythagoras, they don't automatically assume it's Pythagoras and so on. It gets them thinking harder and thinking deeper about the problems. So what has Scotty produced? Well, he has certainly produced the goods here. So this is his, uh, this is his first one. So you see, we've got four questions and the surface structure is all very similar. They all consist of this cuboid, a five, uh, five by 10 by four cuboid. Now imagine you've just taught volume to your students. What are they going to do when they see a cuboid like that? Well, they're going to want to multiply all the three lengths together. Or you've just taught them surface area. They're going to want to work out the surface area. Or you've just taught them 3D Pythagoras. Well, all of a sudden they're looking for that right angle triangle. But if you present them with these four questions, then it throws them off autopilot. Because if they've just been taught volume, okay, now let's have a look. Is this a volume question? Well, what's this mean? The upper and lower bound. Then we've got one here, work out the area to paint, so it's possibly surface area, but we've got a fraction involved. So students are having to think really hard, they're not just on autopilot. Then we've got this one here, 11 meters stick. Now what kind of topic's that? And then we've got this one here, we've got centimeters cubed per minute, we've got 80%. So can you see kids are having to think really, really hard, even though these four questions look very similar, it's four very, top, uh, very different topics involved. Let's look at this next one here. I've got Aaron investing two grand into a bank. So that straight away probably thinks to kids, okay, is that something to do with percentages, compound interest? Okay, there's the word compound interest. But wait a minute, compound interest seems to be in every single one of these questions. So the kids are thrown off autopilot. They can't just use their compound interest formula willy-nilly and hope for the best. And then finally, we've got some rectangles here, all of which look exactly the same. Um, all of which have an algebraic expression. So students might think, okay, well, I've just been taught simplifying algebra. So is it something to do with that? But then wait a minute, they can't all be this. So I've got to really think what, what topics are involved in the questions. So I am absolutely obsessed with these. We're using these um, at least twice a week with our U 11s and the build up to exams. And when we get closer to exams, we're going to be doing uh, every single lesson, a set of these. Nothing's stopping you using these with year sevens, year eights. I think they make an excellent homework, end of topic assessment, uh, however you want to use them. And if you are keen to, to do what Scotty did um, and Andy um, has got involved as well, all the big name Tez authors are getting involved in these. Either upload them to Tez and drop me um, drop me a tweet or an email or just pop them, uh, drop me an email um, and I'll put them straight on my site, ssddproblems.com, completely free, no adverts or anything like that. And we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions like this, which are really getting kids thinking very, very hard about solving problems. So let's keep this SSDD revolution going. Hope that was useful and I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.